Hi guys, this is Hi guys, this is Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video we'll be doing the full review for this uh, Samsung Galaxy M52 5G smartphone. And guys, I've been using this one with my primary Samsung phone now over three weeks. And I'm just uh, doing this review now because I've noticed that the price has fallen down because at its original price point that was at 30,000, this phone didn't make any sense. Initially, then it was launched, it had good offers, but again, it went back to almost 30,000. But now uh, with the Amazon coupon, can get it for 25,000 and I feel for certain segment of the users this makes sense so let's divide it again I've already posted the unboxing video watch that for a general overview and all these things we'll directly jump to the smartphones what I liked what are the things that I did not like and all these things uh, in this one and uh, first thing is again guys uh, it's a what do you say let's start with the pros obviously and uh, first thing is the screen this is having a big screen 6.7 inch screen and uh, I have to say it's a good quality screen that you're getting and the good thing is that uh, this is actually 120 Hertz uh, refresh rate and I've been using it only at that 120 Hertz and it works very well so everything is very very smooth uh, on this uh, smartphone and the, the thing is that uh, it's smooth because of the processor also I think so that's the big thing in fact I would say in the mid-range smartphone category in 2021 the Snapdragon 778 SoC was the best chipset that was released by what do you say Qualcomm because it's not only very efficient uh, it's powerful enough and also consumes a lot late battery life that's why the the combination is very good and many of the phones uh, with the snapdragon 778 which i tested uh, perform very well because of the chipset that's the same case even with this one and again uh, the screen quality is good don't have to worry about it even i used it outdoors i mounted on my bike and used it for gps and stuff like that in fact today also i used it uh, on my bike with gps and the brightness is good enough that it gets the job done so a good quality amulet screen you won't have a problem with that uh, next thing as i've already told you the biggest trump card i would say and you're paying that slight premium i would say because of the snapdragon 778 uh, chipset and it's a very very good chipset again i have to talk about the battery life also to give you an idea and uh, this chipset has so good uh, that uh, Though this chipset is pretty powerful, it simply does not heat up the phone and then also gets very good power life. That's the ideal combination, I would say, that you should have. And that's what you we get. In fact, I'm not that happy even with the Snapdragon 888 because it heats up quite a bit and the battery life is not good. That way, this is overall, I would say, a very good chipset. And if I go to the battery stats and go to the battery, uh, again, guys, this is uh, stats just for today from morning. Uh, even I use the GPS for about 40 minutes on this one on the bike ride. And as you can see, morning I took it out. Now it's at 79%. That means about 21% uh, of uh, battery life was used. And this is a 2 hours of 20 minutes of screen on time. And out of that, guys, 38 minutes was directly using GPS, using at full brightness. So, uh, in fact, in battery life, I would say I was very, very impressed with this uh, smartphone. Uh, and typically, it was giving me almost two days worth of battery life and in terms of SOT anywhere about seven to nine hours of SOT you can get so excellent excellent battery life that we are getting on this one uh, this one ha actually has a 5000 milliamp hour battery in fact here are all the specs for your reference if you guys really want to know about that one anyways moving to the next thing is uh, uh, also the phone is very very light to hold though it's having that 5000 milliamp hour battery it's uh, just seven uh, what is that uh, let me just it's uh, it weighs very light 178 grams or something like that so it simply does not feel that heavy and guys that's all because the back entire thing is made up of plastic that will be in the cons but yeah the phone is very very light to hold and again i'm just uh, using the fingerprint scanner also the fingerprint scanner works very well on this phone uh, you don't have to worry about it and guys regarding the battery uh, i did not enable this always on always on option is also there in the settings if you enable it maybe it will be one and a half days worth of battery life uh, but uh, overall very light and again uh, yeah i have to talk about 5g because this is a 5g smartphone uh, this one if i recall supports 11 bands of 5g so again i think the 5g will be coming in some of the metros this year finally there was a statement earlier so yes 11 bands of 5g so it should work okay next thing is again uh, because of the snapdragon 778 uh, it's also very good for gaming so if you are a gamer also you would be happy with it and again as it's very power efficient you get pretty good battery life and pretty low heating on this phone that is the biggest thing that i like because these days we see phones with very good processors but they heat up so much and the battery life is bad this is a rare combination i would say and overall i would say this one ui is also good on this one uh, this still didn't get the android uh, 12 yet so i'm waiting 
waiting for it. Uh, so hopefully we'll get it. But this is the uh, regular One UI and it handles it fine. There is a bunch of bloatware. I'll talk about it. That's the reason I didn't un uninstall the bloatware. But general operations were good. Bluetooth connectivity was good. Wi-Fi reception was good. Coming to the call quality, which is very, very important. As I've told you, from past three weeks, my main sim is in this one. And I did not have any issues of call quality. In fact, no issues are even that proximity sensor or something. The only nitpicking if I have to do over here is as this does not have a stereo speaker, just a single speaker over here, I felt uh, that, uh, what do you say, sometimes I take the calls on speakerphone. If it's in an empty area like this, it's fine. But in a noisy environment, I felt that the volume was slightly low. But apart from that, call quality, not an issue. Your piece is good, no proximity sensor issue. Uh, also coming to next uh, uh, thing is, how's the memory management? Uh, uh, I'm using the base variant, six gigabytes of RAM. And I have to say the RAM management has been done well on this phone. Uh, the apps that need to stay in memory, uh, reside in memory, for example, TrueCaller works perfectly. This MyGate app that I have to use for security, that also works. So in terms of memory management, day-to-day -day operations, no issues uh, with the smartphone. That way, uh, Samsung has done a decent uh, job, oh, I would say, apart from the bloatware. But the bloatware does not really hamper the RAM management, I would say. So that way, I'm okay. Okay, next move, uh, next thing is uh, uh, regarding fingerprint scanner, I've already told you guys it's uh, fine, no issues. But again, it's over here. I personally like it here. If you're a right-handed person, it's very easy. But if you're a lefty, this can be a little bit tricky, but uh, that's what it is. Now, coming to the camera, guys, uh, we have a triple camera setup. Uh, thankfully, all the three cameras are decent, uh, not total gimmicks. Main is actually a 64 megapixel. Then we have 12 megapixel ultra wide. Then we have a 5 megapixel macro. And the front facing is actually 32. And here are some of the camera samples that uh, have uh, camera shots that I've taken casually around uh, with this uh, smartphone. And I would say the camera performance is decent, I would say. It's neither extraordinary nor bad. And gets the job done. The only thing is that this model does not have OIS. Moving to the front facing camera, it's a 32 megapixel and it's okay. I was expecting a lot more, I would say, with the 32 megapixel front facing camera, but it's just okay. Again, I would say it's not bad or not great. It's just okay. So guys, uh, got this uh, place and uh, kids etc are enjoying it. So let's uh, head out. They told me to come. They're playing badminton or whatever. So let's uh, see. And by the way, I have this DJ action too, so it's secretly recording everything. Uh, let's see uh, what they are doing. Let's capture it like uh, that. So that's regarding the camera performance on this. Now let's move to the cons and some of the peculiar things that uh, I've noticed on this uh, smartphone. And uh, in the box, guys, this is the box. Uh, though this smartphone supports fast charging up to 25 watts, but in the box, only a 15 watt charger is given. So I feel that's a real bummer. Either don't give a charger or give a decent whatever rated power is there for the charger. They should have given a 25 watt charger because the MRP of this one is 30,000. Discount whatever price is, but let's talk about the MRP. So that is something that I do not like. Next thing is uh, in this model, uh, and this is a brother, I would say, to the Samsung Galaxy A52s 5G. That high has OIS. This one does not have OIS. As I've told you, the camera is good. It could have been great even in low lighting had it just got the OIS but here uh, Samsung did that cost cutting and no OIS on uh, this one and again guys the back is a plastic on this one the polycarbonate plastic this we are getting on almost every Samsung smartphone right now so that's the same case with this one and I would say I've been using this without the case for the past three weeks using it roughly good thing is for some reason I haven't got any scratches on this one I noticed no scratches but this is a fingerprint magnet just notice it just attracts fingerprints like uh, so i would say if you're buying this uh, you have those skins or whatever d wrap or whatever stick it that would be better i would say uh, the case or use it uh, with the case so that's regarding the back thing and again uh, one more thing that i do not like is again uh, the samsung is charging that premium almost 30000 or something like that and still there is a bunch of bloatware uh, for example this mooch app this candy crush uh, this mx tuck tuck puck puck whatever uh, these are by juice and all those things i didn't install all these things these were pre-installed on this so a lot of actually uh, bloatware and junkware uh, was pre-installed on this even though if you see my setup I had unchecked all those options, still uh, that was there. Another thing is that I don't know, uh, I am not very sure about this one. 
is samsung adding what do you say more craftware with updates the thing is that so guys if you notice the last update that we got is just first november after that i had applied it on december 8th and after that we didn't get an update i'm actually waiting for the update to see if samsung adds more craftware with this one but uh, monthly updates we are not getting so the last update was november december also didn't we didn't get so maybe we'll get it now in january so looks like samsung is updating the smartphone once every three months uh so that's regarding the update and the craftware situation i don't know with the new update that we might get in january or something will samsung add craftware or not that is something uh maybe when i get next update i'll add that in the comment section or make it a sticky about that one uh, so next thing is uh, regarding the pricing guys uh, as i've told you uh, for the MRP price, the MRP price is almost 30,000. Uh, this was launched on Amazon. And for that price, I would say this is simply overpriced. And last thing I completely forgot, man, the biggest con about it. Uh, we'll talk about the price. No headphone jack, no headphone jack, as you can see, uh, 3.5mm headphone jack and no stereo speakers also. So I think so that's the biggest bummer of the smartphone. Why did you omit the 3.5mm headphone jack if you're not giving the stereo speaker? So that is something that I really do not like. So if you're buying the smartphone, get a TWS or something that you have to invest uh, separately. Now, let's talk about the pricing. As I've told you, I didn't like the MRP pricing. Uh, the MRP pricing is 30,000. It was launched uh, on Amazon. And that was the reason I was not reviewing this because I didn't feel like it was justified. But now the pricing, there is a Amazon coupon, 5,000 rupees coupon. So the price falls down to about 25,000 and I feel if you are specifically looking as for a Samsung mid-range smartphone uh, for uh, and at 25,000 it's this one is actually a pretty good deal uh, but again uh, some of the shortcomings as I've no, uh, told you no stereo speakers on this one and no OIS on the uh, back camera which you can actually find on the it's elder brother I would say the Galaxy A52 S 5G but that is almost about six five to six thousand more than this one uh, but at twenty five thousand this is certainly a decent uh, smartphone in fact i would say uh, last year samsung launched a bunch of these mcd smartphone that is in 2021 and i simply did not like any one of them that much but this one is the only one i would say that i can recommend because the overall performance is very good and for that twenty five thousand, i can justify it yes there is still that samsung premium that you are paying but overall because of the snapdragon 778 processor the camera and the screen uh, it's a decent uh, good enough phone i would say uh, but anyways, what do you guys feel about this Samsung Galaxy M52 5G? Do let me know in the comment section below. And guys, if you're still not subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. And also, uh, I had created a new channel called Geeky Ranjit the Rides and Vlogs. So if you haven't checked that out, check that out and subscribe to that one. If you like, uh, what do you say, cars, bikes and stuff like that. Anyways, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, guys.